Good afternoon and welcome to Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5 Ibado. This is another great moment to read books and interact with writers. My name is Michael Olatumbosun. The book for today is titled The Fastest Way to Learn About Your Oral Health, a detailed guide to all your oral health needs. It is written by Dr. Abraham Akimbami and published in 2021 by Tomio Publishing Ibadan. The author, Dr. Abraham Akimbami, has a mandate of educating the African layman on the prevention of gum infection, tooth decay, and other dental issues. The author opens the book by underscoring the crucial role that our teeth play in protecting our smile, which in turn helps us to attract people and forge enduring relationships and favors. Thus, he says that we have a responsibility of taking great care of our oral health. Regrettably, however, Many, if not all of us, neglect the health of our mouth and only turn up at the dental clinic when we are in excruciating pain. So for the author, this book, The Fastest Way to Learn About Your Oral Health, will help the reader with simple, basic information that will help them to prevent toothache and gum diseases. In the book, Dr. Abraham discusses the mouth and its concomitant organs, clearly defining the stages of tooth development. He discusses oral hygiene habits, intricately explaining how to correctly brush the teeth and how not to, and quickly pinpoints the effects of using the wrong type of brush on your gum or the sensitive layer of the tooth. In the book, Dr. Abraham discusses common ailments of the oral cavity like the bleeding gums and treatment, as well as some cleaning, scaling and polishing procedures carried out by dentists or dental therapists. In a section of the book, the author discusses dental caries and toothache, as well as what to do to restore a decayed tooth. But he quickly adds for emphasis that not all teeth with holes must be removed. In the book, the author writes about how our diet, especially sugar-containing foods and drinks, have adverse effects on our oral health. I think I need to read that part of the book. Just listen now. It says here, the enamel is the outer surface of a tooth. However, like a kryptonite, is to a superman, so are acidic drinks and sugary foods to the enamel. In the presence of carbonated drinks, the shiny surface of the tooth becomes dull as a result of the corrosive nature of these drinks. Sugar-containing foods and drinks are quite refreshing and as a result are part of our daily lives, but their excessive consumption has an adverse effect on the tooth surface. They erode the protective layer on the tooth surface, making them more susceptible to the action of the decay-causing bacteria in the mouth. You're listening to Book Splash on Splash FM. The book on the table is titled The Fastest Way to Learn About Your Oral Health, written by Dr. Abraham Akimbami. In this highly colorfully illustrated book, the author exposes the reader to the consequences of missing teeth and replacement options and the often feared conversation about tooth extraction and all the technicalities involved. The author also gives the reader the correlation between some diseases like diabetes, hypertension, peptic ulcer, etc. and dentistry. In 73 pages of this book, the author has successfully engaged and sufficiently educated the reader on common ailments of the teeth and mouth and how to prevent them and how and when to approach dentists and oral health professionals. He has also been able to simplify the information in the book for the delight and education of the reader. It is indeed a very handy book to have. That's listening to Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5 Ibadan. And it's now time to meet my guest, Dr. Abraham Akimbami, the author of the book, the fastest way to learn about uh, your oral health, a detailed guide to all your oral health needs. Dr. Abraham Akimbami, welcome to Book Splash. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> you have a very good book here. Yes, I, I believe. <laughs> the simple way I describe it is a medical book for the layman. Tell me, what informed this book? Just as you, you mentioned in your review, many people are really not aware of what exactly goes on in the mouth and then 
I discovered that while I was in my final year rounding up, I noticed that people would come in and then wouldn't even know the type of toothbrush they should use. Mm. As as simple as that. And then if uh, people come and not aware of the type of toothbrush or the type of toothpaste to use, you can imagine what else they have no idea about. Mm. So the thought of writing a book or the thought of educating people, the general public on the aura else started developing in me and then I started with church outreaches with um, then on my social media platforms I also do that and and I just thought okay let's put all this together and then let's move a step ahead and then uh, make this education educative material available Mm -hmm. in a book form so that you can always pick the book and refer to it and then so that we can have a LDR community. Hmm. Okay, so I like that to your explanation. You see, the very first thing I want to strike you with is this. Uh, medical books are usually written for medical people. Mm-hmm. But in your case, you are writing a medical book for lay people. And that's not just the snack. The issue here is that a lot of medical people will want to say you are encouraging people to do self-help. In other words, self-medication. So, how do you react to that? Uh, well, the truth is, healthcare is divided into three major, let's say, steps, if I can put it that way, for a lack of a better word. We have the primary healthcare system, the secondary, and the tertiary. So, uh, the primary healthcare system basically is uh, is where you just get uh, immediate care. The the pharmacy is part of the primary healthcare mm-hmm. system, mm-hmm. and um, other. Um, uh, primary health care system. So having a book like this will be part of the primary health care system in quotes. Mm. The idea of breaking down the health care system into those three uh, categories is so as not to overwhelm the tertiary okay. um, facilities. Well, for example, in Badon, here now, almost every, if you have a headache, you want to go to UCH. Mm-hmm. If you can't sleep or you want to go to UCH, which is not supposed to be the case. Mm. So you should go to maybe a clinic nearby uh, and then if they can't attend to you, go to a more sophisticated clinic. And then you say it's supposed to be a research center mm-hmm. because it's a tertiary institution. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so having a book like this would help to, um, shall I say, augment or just, um, yes, augment the primary healthcare system. And then I purposely left out uh, any form of self-medication. Mm-hmm. So I didn't. I didn't write anything about this you kind of drug. No yeah, prescription. no prescription, mm-hmm. nothing like that. It's just simple things to do. And and at every point, I mentioned that go we'll see a dentist. Yeah, go we'll see a dentist. Yes. Now, you see, looking at the book just by its cover, they say don't judge a book by its cover. Looking at the book just by its cover, mm-hmm. a lot of your colleagues who may not have read the book will look at this cover. The fastest way to learn about your oral oral health, a detailed guide to all your oral health needs. And they will say, you are writing to demystify our job. Has anybody said that to you? Uh, well, no. Maybe maybe it's because I've, I've sent the book to my friends. <laughs> uh, but I've also sent the book to senior colleagues. Uh, I have reviews from the yeah. president of our association mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then the director of the dental um, services in Lagos State. And um, so as um, little as this book is, we he went through several stages of review with uh, my consultant, Dr. Waki Moju, because I, I wanted to make sure that every information that i put out there i can stand by it and i can defend myself Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um so just like we discussed before this uh before going on air uh i have the solution to a problem Mm -hmm. but then people that have the problem are not even aware of the problem all right so there are people that have money for dental treatment Mm -hmm. but don't even know there's a solution to whatever problem they might have. Mm-hmm. So the idea is to enlighten the general public and um, it, it cuts across every economic strata. Mm-hmm. So we have the preventive part whereby you you can um, stop any form of um, dental problems mm-hmm. so that you don't have to spend a lot of money. Okay. And then for people that have the money already mm-hmm. to spend, now they can 
correct those parts so it mm. just cuts across every, even just this morning i was at uh, secondary school just give an oral talk so everything is from is for the layman mm. basically okay now there's something that you wrote here you know at the beginning of the book that i quite agree with and i i thought we should you know really dig up that matter it has to do with people presenting late almost every health challenge is presented late mm -hmm. particularly the oral health part of it so yeah. if you know i have a tooth pain in me somewhere all i just do is i try to look for painkillers i use and sometimes we bring concussions together mm -hmm. uh you know alcohol and all that put in the mouth and, <laughs> and then we, we say we are okay mm -hmm. until there is big problem maybe we cannot sleep mm -hmm. how do we address that kind of situation uh okay so it's a general challenge here in this let's say in this part of the world um, the health seeking behavior so it's it's not just um, it's not just the dentist that experienced this it's also in, in every other aspect of medicine mm. so people have this phobia for for hospitals particularly for dental clinics <laughs> <laughs> so i i want to believe that for dental clinics it's there from when parents always scare their children and say oh if you don't do this i'm going to take you to the dentist to remove your tooth so we all have that that is just in our in our subconscious uh, memory that oh dentist is synonymous to removing removing mm -hmm. the tooth and mm -hmm. then the, the most parents don't even portray that same well like it's going to pain you they're going to give you injection and all of that so that is all in our subconscious but then what i try to do here is to explain that um, removing the tooth is usually even the last option mm. and we don't like to remove teeth but yeah we are trying to remove teeth and uh, we give you that option uh, okay you can remove your tooth you can do feel it you can do all of that treatment uh yes but removing the tooth is the last option so uh, just just like other um, health related issues where people present late, the dentist is not left out. But one of the things the book is for is to help you know that, okay, um, if you have this sign, your body is telling you that, oh, something is wrong, then you can go and present to the dentist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because like you said now, if you just feel something in your tooth, most people will just maybe just go to the chemist, buy this and buy that. But it's to give people a general idea of what might be happening mm -hmm. and then say, oh, okay, oh, I feel this. Okay, I've read it in this book that this might be this. Mm. Then let me go and see the dentist instead of going to the chemist. So what happens when you go to the chemist or you um, take all those concussions that you're just delaying the mm. doomsday mm. <laughs> yes yeah, so you are delaying the so doomsday so it's better to go to the clinic just go to the clinic so let the dentist tell you oh, this and this give you um, different options then you still have time to think about the mm. option you want to go for okay. and then there will be a uh, treatment okay so uh, the program is still book splash on splash fm here in the city of ibado dr abraham akimbami is my guest is the author of this book the fastest way to learn about your oral health a detailed guide to all your oral health needs in the book you wrote about you know the dental hygiene habits uh, bleeding gums scaling and polishing of teeth and other things that you've written here i want to pay attention to a certain section here that i mentioned in my you know intro there dental caries and toothache you now said not all teeth with holes must be removed Mm -hmm. The first thing that we always think about is once you feel a hole in your teeth or a pain and all that, the first thing we would think about is removal. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe why we usually are always scared of going to dental clinics. Yes. Yeah. Tell us why do you say that not all teeth with hole should be removed? Mm, okay, for me now, when anyone calls me and says I have toothache, I'll be like, uh, while I'm still trying to find out exactly what more might be causing the toothache, the next thing they say is, I don't want to remove my tooth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so then we have to um, educate them and uh, just tell them exactly what might be wrong. But it, it's just in their memory, that, in their mind that, oh, toothache is synonymous with removing the tooth. So that's why I, I had to create that chapter and then I it that not all teeth or all teeth we hold have to be removed. So. That's because uh, I'll try to be as graphic as I can since it's on air and um, it's not visual. So now the tooth has um, three layers, mm -hmm. the outer layer, the middle layer and the inner layer. 
So the inner layer is where you have the blood supply and the nerves. The middle layer is like the shock absorber. Mm -hmm. It has it's, it's the sensitive layer. Okay. Then the outer layer is that's the white layer is the hardest substance in the body. Mm -hmm. we call it the enamel. So now, if you have the decay on the enamel, all you just do is just fill it up. Okay. You know, it's because okay. it's on the surface. Mm -hmm. But now the thing is that because we don't have this um, re um, health seeking behavior um, in in this part of the world in Nigeria, people we will not detect that all early enough. Mm -hmm. If people come for their regular routine checkups, we can develop that hole and just seal it up, and then that's it. Okay. But then the this hole now becomes wider, goes deeper into the middle layer. Mm. So now the middle, middle layer is softer than the outer layer. So once it gets into that middle layer, it now spreads out. Mm. So it might come from the outer layer just in a, in a pin O format, then it goes into the middle layer and spreads out. Mm. So once that happens is that the base of that outer layer mm -hmm. Is compromised okay. so the outer layer which is the enamel mm. will now collapse it becomes shaky and exactly so mm. you now have a large crater inside the tooth Whoa. at that stage in the middle layer where we call the dentin or the shock absorber of the tooth you can still put a fill in there okay yeah but at that in that layer you, you that's when you, you have sensitivity when food gets into that space mm. you feel mm -hmm. the pain and that's because that's because of the proximity to the pore mm -hmm. as the art of the tooth where the nerves and all of that are. so now uh at that stage as well me most people will say oh, it's just when i eat on that side that i feel the pain then they avoid eating on that side and move to the other side so what's now going to happen is that as the cavity uh, is progressing out uh, outwards and inwards it now compromises the pulp once it gets into the pulp that's when you can get a call by 2 a.m and the, uh, and the patient or the individual is asking uh, how early are you going to open your clinic <laughs> i mean i've had two cases such where we met the patient in front of the clinic because mm. person couldn't sleep at night oh. so that's one we call it acute pulpitis that means the i mean the pulp is is just wants to explode mm. so at that stage still you can put a filling but then there's a, a different type of treatment okay it's, yeah Okay, so um, I'd just like us to cut it short because yeah. I have, you know, quite a number of other questions mm -hmm. I want to ask. Okay. You wrote in this book, Agents of Tooth Decay. Okay. So just tell us now, what are the, what are the habits that cause our tooth to get spoiled? Okay. Uh, so let, let's stick with decay because there are other types of yes. um, tooth wear. Okay. So if we're, if we are sticking uh, with decay, um, the major culprit for tooth decay is, um, is sugary content. It's sugar. <laughs> <laughs> it's sugar in different forms. It might be refined in uh, carbonated drinks, mm -hmm. or it could be in um, in, uh, in in starch okay. or starchy foods when it's broken down. Um, that's things like rice, bread, and all of that. But that being the major culprit, the it doesn't mean that because you because for for me uh, in particular i like sweet things i like chocolates but i w i wouldn't have a hole in my tooth because i know how to care for my teeth mm -hmm. so where people fall short is caring for the teeth okay now that is one um, brushing at night before going to bed uh, I need to I need to say that again. It's brushing at night before going to bed. Okay. Because we have people come in and say, "Oh, they, I brush twice a day, but I still have a hole in my tooth." But when you dig further, they, you you I ask, "What time of the day do you brush?" It might be when they get back from work. Okay. They take their bath, then they brush, mm -hmm. then they go and have dinner. Mm. So when they have dinner, they don't brush before going to bed. Oh, okay. So the emphasis is brushing at night <laughs> before going to bed. So um, which most people do not um, do. And then also the use of toothpick. Toothpick is also a major cause of decay. Now toothpick will cause decay in the roots, not on top or the outer surface of the mm. tooth. So now how that happens is that the toothpick 
create a space yeah. in the gum. Exactly. And we force the Ex- we force the toothpick into exactly. the, the mouth and then it opens space. Uh, yeah, open space in the gum. Then in, in that space, which you call a pocket, food starts to trap in. Oh, wow. So this food, uh, even if you brush 10 times a day, most times you cannot get into that <laughs> yeah, space. Exactly. Then it gets rotten and decay of the roots. So just those little little things will cost. But we can't care. avoid sugar, can we? No, like I said, I mean, I mean, sweet tooth, uh, chocolates, <laughs> cake, sweets, <laughs> everything I take. Wow. But then I know to brush at night before going to bed and all those things. And one more thing is the six monthly um, scaling and polishing. Mm. Also very important. How regularly should we visit the dental clinic? How regularly? Uh, so we say every six months basically for the scaling and polishing and then if there's any um, ongoing decay we just fill that up or at most once a year okay uh before i let you go doctor i have question about um you have linkage here you know there's a link here um between diabetes and dentistry or some other diseases diabetes hypertension and all that what's the link what's the link uh yes so the mouth is in the body so we should not anything that goes on in the body affects the mouth so that, i think um, that's that's one thing that we detach the mouth from the body and then uh, you you hear people say it's not just teeth it's not just teeth but i mean teeth is part of the body so now in a in a diabetic state if it's uncontrolled that means the person is not aware that it's, it's diabetic and then even the person is aware and it's not regular with the medication so in that state the soldiers of the body that's the cells that fight fight off bacteria and infection they are quite sluggish Mm. and so what this happens is that the bacteria in the mouth which is we call it the normal flora so normal flora means it's normal bacteria Mm. normal flora uh, in the mouth becomes aggressive okay so what it means is that you really don't even need to consume a lot of sugary content for this um, decay causing bacteria to act or to react so what happens is that in this state that bacteria the one that becomes very active is even um what it's called is becomes aggressive in the in the bone holding the tooth mm-hmm. so it's not even just causing tooth decay now okay. it's the structure as supporting the tooth that it starts to weaken and we have people that come in and um, they say they've lost one or two teeth mm-hmm. and we ask how did you lose the tooth did you extract it they say they just fell off okay and that is the uh, next question is are you diabetic mm. so if you have one two three four teeth that just fell off on their own they were shaking and just fell off it's a and you you're not aware that are diabetic that's that is a sign one of the signs of diabetes and then please just go to the <laughs> clinic <laughs> okay so before i let you go once again okay I- i'd like to hear about your life as a writer medical doctors are usually very busy people behind books and all that but how do you manage to write or how did it come to you i mean writing uh well yeah like most things it, it starts with passion okay so this will, might not be passion for writing but it's just the passion to um educate people so now and um, i started this journey of educating people from 2018 i've been here once i think yes once i'm just talking about orioles as well been to other radio stations just educating people so it's just that passion for educating people that brought me to writing and then i want to i think i should have more books on oral because there are other aspects you can have for children mm-hmm. you can have for mothers mm-hmm. and people like that so i believe the passion is going to push me to write more books on on oral so in one sentence what's mm-hmm. your main message in this book for all of us hmm. one sentence uh, well uh, i would say that um you should not detach the care of the mouth from the care of the body and the the mouth is uh, part of the body so the way you take care of your body is the way you should take care of your mouth dr abraham akimbami thank you for your time thank you thank you so much sir, for having me that was my conversation with dr akimbami abraham i hope you enjoyed it if you did please join me same time next saturday for another time on book splash on Splash FM 105.5.
Thank you for listening and thanks to my sound manager Victor Daudu for a job well done. In case you have a question or query, please contact me by SMS 0805-699-8676 or email mollatumbosun at splashfm1055.com. I am Michael Ollatumbosun and I urge you to read the book today.